Hello. I'm having a doozy of a day. It's been harrowing. I've been harrowed. I know I started my last video similarly. It's because somebody in my family is going through some stuff right now and I am very much a family person so I am going through it right alongside them and yeah. Anyway. <laughs> so I've got my alcoholic beverage. I've got this tube of mini m ms uh -huh. and I've got this box of books that I wanted to give away. I'm so excited. As excited as I can be while being absolutely drained. I was out all day. My mom told me it had come in and now I'm home. I get to open it. So I have something to look forward to. It is from Christine underscore Queen of Books on Instagram. I won her giveaway. Uh, she does it like every month. So if you are interested in a big box of books, you should go follow her and you should enter her giveaway. Don't hold me to that every month thing. Um, but from what I've seen, she does it basically every month to basically to clear her shelves. I appreciate it. And I think she has a wonderful taste in books. So I was very excited to see this. I was very excited to win this. Um, and I have absolutely no clue what has just come. Cheers to book friends and mystery boxes. I think you're supposed to cheers before you drink. But I do what I want. Ooh, paper. Just what I've always wanted. Ooh. Okay. She said between 5 and 10. I can just see... <laughs> That's so exciting. It's such a beautiful sight to me. I see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Seven bucks. Okay, okay. My day just got a lot better. I'm just gonna bask in the fact that I now have seven new books. Do I have to add them to my count? Yes. But. <laughs> Listen, I just want to be happy. And I'm a material girl. So. Let's start with the thickest. Let's start with the thickest, the biggest. Ooh, there's good texture. The guest book. Ooh, that looks so familiar, but I can't place it. A lifetime of secrets, a history untold. No, it's a simple word uttered on a summer porch in 1936, and it will haunt Kitty Milton for the rest of her life. Kitty and her husband Ogden are both from families considered the backbone of the country, but this refusal will come to be Kitty's defining moment, and its consequences will ripple through the Milton family for generations. For while they summer on their island in Maine, the winds of change are beginning to stir. In 1959, New York City, two strangers enter the Milton Circle. One captures the attention of Kitty's daughter, while the other makes each of them question what the family stands for. This new generation insists the times are changing, and in one night, everything does. So much so that in the present day, the third generation of Miltons doesn't have enough money to keep the island in Maine. Evie Milton's mother has just died, and as Evie digs into her mother's and grandparents' history, what she finds is a story as unsettling as it is inescapable, a story that threatens the foundation of the Milton family myth. This is so fun. I have really not done a lot of what are the words? I don't have them. You know, when there's mm, family Gen gen generational stories. I think that's what I was going for. And now I have a bunch of them. This book feels great. It feels great. It feels beautiful. Thanks. 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 I'm so excited. I really am. Like, I don't, I'm not putting it on. I'm just remembering how happy I actually am about this. So I started with the biggest, but now I think I'm just going to go down the line. Actually, let's go. Let's go for this guy on the side. Who are you? Lavender House. When your existence is a crime, everything you do is criminal. Lavender House, 1952. The family seat of recently deceased matriarch Irene Lamontine, head of the famous Lamontine soap empire, 
This estate offers a unique freedom where none of the residents or staff hide who they are, but to keep their secret, they've needed to keep others out, and now they're worried they're keeping a murderer in. Irene's widow hires Evander Mills to uncover the truth behind her mysterious death. Andy, recently fired from the San Francisco police after being caught in a raid on a gay bar, is happy to accept. His calendar is wide open, and his secret is the kind of secret the Larmontines understand. Andy had never imagined a world like Lavender House. He's seduced by the safety and freedom found in its gates, where a queer family lives honestly and openly. But that honesty doesn't extend to everything, and he quickly finds himself a pawn in a family game of old money, subterfuge, and jealousy. And Irene's death is only the beginning. Actually? 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 Oh my gosh. Because, like, obviously the like queerness not being accepted is part of the plot but it's not like the plot and i love that i love that to be able to say like yes this is the world we live in and we're gonna and we're not gonna ignore it and we're not gonna make up like an alternative universe where it's not like this but also they're real people doing real things not that people who've been persecuted aren't real people doing real things, but you know what I'm saying? Like, they, they exist beyond just their persecution. Anyway. Anyway, I think this sounds really interesting. Whew, this sounds good. Next book. We Are the Light. I've seen this one around. Mm, they don't want to tell me what it is. They don't want to tell me what's going on. A letter from the author. I appreciate that, but not right now. All right. Well, what's this? From Matthew Quick, the New York Times bestseller. Yeah, I don't care. A poignant and hopeful novel about a widower who takes in a grieving teenager and inspires a magical revival in their small town. You know what? That helps a little bit. It's jogged my memory, but if I didn't, if I hadn't already read people's reviews of this. I would have no clue, but it, I have, so that jogged my memory, and I do remember being interested in this, because, like, typically I don't read reviews all the way through unless I think the book sounds interesting, because, <laughs> like, if it's a book I'm never going to care about regardless, why would I care whether you liked it or not? Sorry. So, yeah, I think this sounds interesting. That's all I have to say about that. Thank you. Next book. Half-blown rose. I'm digging the cover. Vincent, having grown up the privileged daughter of artists, love the name Vincent for a girl, character, I never do that myself, don't know why I needed to clarify that, thanks, um, has a life that is lovely in many ways. At 44, she enjoys, love a middle-aged protagonist. She has a vibrant group of friends, and she's even caught the eye of a young, charismatic man, man named Loop. But Vincent is also in Paris to escape a painful betrayal. Her husband, Cillian, has published a best-selling book divulging secrets about his past and their marriage, including the fact that when he was a teenager, he may have had a child with a young woman back in Dublin before his family moved to California and never returned. Now estranged, Vincent has agreed to see Cillian again at their son's wedding the following summer, but Loop introduces new complications. Soon they begin an intense affair, and somewhere between dinners made together, hazy evenings in nightclubs where Loop's band plays, and long starry walks along the Seine, Vincent feels herself blossoming. Filled with playlists, travel journal entries, and excerpts from Cillian's novel, Half Blown Rose traverses Paris, liminal spaces, and the messy complexities of relationships. As Cillian does all he can to win her back, Vincent must decide what she wants and who she will be. Um, actually? Um, actually. Oh, I love that. I love just the, um, the, like, travel journal book excerpt, different pieces coming together. Thanks. I promise I got a degree in English literature. 
I know how to talk about this stuff. Just not tonight. And I really wanted to open it tonight. And so yeah. I do what I want. Thanks. Anyway, this. I love the idea. I love the execution as far as what I see. And I'm getting the vibe. Like, I don't want to say Loop is the child of the husband, but I feel like Loop is the child of the husband. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. But, oh, that's a beautiful, that's beautiful. Oh, that's beautiful. Thanks. Oh, I like that. That sounds interesting. <gasps> There's a little card in here. Get halfway through and I didn't even see the card it was between books i wasn't taking all the books out at once dear meredith congrats on your giveaway win i so hope at least a few of these are up your alley can't wait to hear what you think thank you for following me on bookstagram here's to good reads for us both this year christine queen of books thank you christine beautiful amazing wonderful i've taken out half the books already and they're awesome I'm so excited. All right, we've got three more to go. I've been hanging out with small children all day. So when we say numbers, we have to hold them up. <laughs> all right, down the line. Love and other disasters. Cute, that's cute. There's nothing like a little competition to heat things up. Dahlia Woodson's culinary dreams are coming true. Sure, her marriage ended in a hideous explosion of misery, and she's quit her job for the gamble of a lifetime, but she's finally a contestant on the cooking show Chef's Special. Now all Dahlia has to do is not fall on her face more than once, make the best food of her life, and try not to get distracted by her hot, incredibly dishy competition. London Parker is fighting for more than just a cooking title. Not only did they just come out as non-binary, on national television, but this is also an opportunity for London to raise some support and a ton of cash for the queer community. No pressure. Getting distracted by a tiny and adorable tornado like Dahlia could be disastrous. Still, somewhere among the flying fish tacos, rampant egos, and culinary chaos is something that looks a lot like deliciously spicy chemistry. But can London and Dahlia's growing relationship take the heat, or are they about to get burned? Yes, please. I don't. I don't, I don't have anything to say. I don't. I don't even have anything to say about this. Yes. Thank you. Thanks. That's so cute. That's so cute. Did they use they throughout it? They use they. They use they. They use they. <sighs> okay. I am so incredibly excited. I'm so incredibly excited. Okay. Next book. The Ballerinas. I feel like I've read reviews for this as well. 13 years ago, Duffine Lager abandoned her prestigious soloist spot at the Paris Opera Ballet for a new life in St. Petersburg taking with her a secret that could upend the lives of her best friends, fellow dancers Lindsay and Margot. Now 36 years old, Delphine has returned to her former home and to the legendary Palais Garnier Opera House to choreograph the ballet that will kickstart the next phase of her career. And she hopes finally make things right with her former best friends. But Delphine quickly discovers that things have changed while she's been away, and some secrets can't stay buried forever. Moving between the trio's adolescent years and the present day, ballerinas explores the complexities of female friendship, the dark drive toward physical perfection in the name of artistic expression, the double-edged sword of ambition and passion, and the sublimated rage that so many women hold inside, all accumulating in a twist you won't see coming, with a magnificent cast of characters you won't soon forget. That sounds really good. That sounds amazing. I love the back and forth time periods. That sounds so cool. I love examination of female friendship. I love examination of ambition in art. I'm excited. I'm so excited for this. Also, I get the vibe that you don't figure that they don't say what the betrayal is until the end. 
because if we're going past to future back and forth yeah and if not the end at least not until later in the book and so excited i want to see if she can pull one over on me and not let me figure out what the twist is because i do that too often and i hate i hate it last book acne rude just kidding a memoir i wrote it <laughs> no i didn't oh this is fun most of, i think all but two of these are advanced reading copies so i need to remember that when i read them so i'm not like being too harsh about like typos because i am pretty harsh about typos when i read finished books because they shouldn't be there you're gonna market me this product it should it should be examined all the way over it should be fine anyway but so i won't be as harsh i gotta remember remind myself not to be as harsh because they're arcs this also looks like an arc that's so fun there's the marketing campaign on the back <laughs> that's fun but it has come out all of these have come out since as far as i saw this is despite having blonde hair and fair skin laura chin is half black the daughter of a black father and a white mother, which on its own makes for some hilarious and insightful looks at identity. Lara's parents, both Scientologists and nonconformists in myriad ways, got divorced early in Lara's childhood, and she spent her teen years ping-ponging back and forth between Clearwater, Florida and Los Angeles, with an extended stint in Tijuana for good measure. Lara lived alone and raised herself for long periods of time. Don't worry, her mom's alcoholic boyfriend was always nearby to supervise. Lost family members to horrific tragedies, dropped out of high school in her teens, and all the while was completely obsessed with, her, with and scarred by her severe acne condition. This story is not a sad story. There's jello wrestling. There's an abnormal amount of dancing. There's information about whether you can drink gallons of sangria while taking unregulated Accutane acquired in Mexico. But mostly there is love, and ultimately there is redemption. Laura shows how, with grit and determination and an openness to the good in the world, you can overcome almost anything to find love, happiness, and yes, even occasionally, clear skin. This is interesting. The marketing campaign talks about feminist and women's interests, and in fact it says biography slash autobiography forward slash women, like when categorizing it, and really this all seems very discordant to me. It seems like the impact of acne here is very small. Uh, it seems like she does not talk very much about, you know, feminism, aside from the fact that she just herself sounds like a pretty fun, interesting woman. So, um, yeah, I don't, I don't know if I would have picked this up myself, but I do think it sounds very interesting. And you heard me laugh while reading the back. Um, I think it's going to be a good time. So I'm still excited for it. The latest in a line of disappointments. That's it. That's all seven of them. Thank you. Thank you to Christine, Queen of Books. I will put her handle down in the description. I don't know if I can do a link. Like, I know you can do a link. I don't know if I personally can do a link. I'm not feeling very optimistic about it right now. But tomorrow's another May. So thank you for watching. I hope that you at least have a good day. Tell me if you've read any of these books. I'm so excited because at least two of them, like I've clocked before, even if they aren't like on my list, I've read reviews and been like, ooh, interesting. So I was right. I'm gonna pat myself on the back, small victories for saying Christine, queen of books, has good taste in books. I stand by that. We're gonna applaud her, but we're also gonna applaud me because I need it right now. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, yeah, I think that's it. Have a, have a wonderful day. Thank you.